All right, welcome back everyone. Thanks so much for joining us again. This is a second video in the series about EFT, Emotionally Focused Therapy. And as you know from the first video, we talked a lot about why EFT is so effective. And today, very excited to kind of continue that conversation to really dig deep into why EFT works and really talk about what couples can expect. And as always today, I have Ami joining to talk a lot more about some of the cycles that uh, some of the people can expect to have in when they're coming in to see somebody who's an EFT therapist. So Ami, maybe you can kind of jump in and tell us a little bit about what a couple can expect when they're beginning to see an EFT therapist. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, as we talked about in the last video, um, EFT is an experiential therapy, mm -hmm. um, but it is quite structured as well because it is evidence-based. Right. Um, and there are three main stages and nine general steps that therapists follow um, to work through um, the model of EFT. Mm -hmm. um, the first stage is basically it's it's called the de-escalation stage but okay. um basically in the first stage we're getting to know the couple we're going over the attachment histories um understanding the reasoning for why they show up and they fight through the relationship in the way that they fight for the relationship mm -hmm. and then what mm -hmm. we call tracking the cycle okay um and we can do we can talk a little bit more about tracking the cycle uh sure. later on um then in stage three that's more um that's the bonding right we're still tracking the cycle but we're going deeper we're getting into view of self stuff we're getting into the attachment bonds um and like we talked about last time we're really chipping away at those blocks to mm -hmm. vulnerability mm -hmm. so that you can be vulnerable with your partner but your partner can also accept that vulnerability right, right, right. um and when that happens that those are reparative experiences those are the reparative emotional experiences that we're looking for that will create a safer more secure bond in the relationship hmm. um, and then stage three is really just a consolidation of of the change right so making sure that these bonding experiences have worked mm -hmm. um that there are there's a new more um positive cycle of attachment um, that's been created because mm -hmm. that's really what creates the lasting change from EFT therapy. Hmm. Okay. So it sounds like when a couple is thinking about EFT, they really are coming in, maybe they're coming in hot talking about some content, right? Yep. So the first part, it sounds like really to try to deescalate it, Yes. Uh, to try to see what the cycle is like for them. Mm -hmm. uh, the second stage almost sounds to me going a lot deeper to try to figure out what some of the emotional needs for the individual might be that maybe come across in a way that the other person is you know, either having a hard time hearing yeah. or the person is having internal blocks that even actually presenting to the other individual. And lastly, of course, the consolidation part is where you take what basically you've learned yeah. and we'll do a reenactment um, <clears throat> in, in, in a later video, but where they can take those bonding experiences and really take it further when they kind of terminate treatment. Yes, yes, absolutely. And in, in stage two, just to be clear, it's it's also, um, we don't want to get to the deeper, more vulnerable emotions until the couple is ready, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it's painful to share an emotional experience when um, when your partner's not ready to hear it right. um, and accept it. Um, so that's why that 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 work is really done a little bit later in treatment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about those three stages, so the meat of the therapy is really what the second stage. How would you? Mm. Well, we, or it depends on the couple. How 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 do you see it? Yeah, it, that's a good question. I I, I it really it, it does depend on the couple. For me, I think okay. I think stage one really is m might be the meat of it because okay. de-escalating and understanding that cycle of interaction. Once you get a good grasp on the cycle. Mm -hmm it becomes less of a blame game, right? Okay. It becomes less of a, you did this and you have to fix this. And, and we have more of an understanding of what is going on inside for our partner when they're, when they're showing up with an outside behavior, that's hurtful. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I haven't fully thought about it, but I, mm -hmm. my instinct is to say, yes, the stage one is where, where the meat of the work happens. And then stage two, in terms of time, mm -hmm. I think is less, but it's also um, that, that that's that's a bonding. Those right. are the bonding events. So that's right. the that that's that lasting change that we want to um, we want to create. Gotcha. Okay. Great. So it sounds like there's three basic stages mm -hmm. that I'm um, <clears throat> that some of the 
if if some of the viewers are interested in pursuing this type of treatment to kind of consider. Also, it sounds like you were beginning to talk about this idea of de-escalation and tracking the cycle. And some of the viewers could refer to the chart that's uh, right now being shown as a reference for some of the conversation that Ami are uh, going to have. So if you can jump in a little bit more and talk about how that tracking could look like so that some of the viewers can get a little bit more familiar with what to expect. Yes, absolutely. So um, as we've been talking about um, in the study on the last one, tracking the cycle is, is a big part of EFT. Mm -hmm. um, Sue Johnson, the creator of EFT, came up with a cycle um, that basically looks like an infinity loop. Um, and it, it, it helps under it helps couples understand the outside um, protective behavior versus mm -hmm. the inside vulnerable feeling and the protections that happen, the blocks that come up that we talked a little bit about. Um, we're actually going to use um, Debbie Debbie Semeca Diaz's um, bow tie. Um, oh, we right. were both we were both trained here in right. New Jersey, and she's right. she's the trainer here. And I, it, I I'm a visual person. This one makes a little bit more sense to me. Okay, great. Um, okay, so if you uh, look at the diagram on the screen right now. Um, when you are, you, you can use this to basically track any conflict between mm -hmm. two people. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, let, let's start with partner A's outside protective behavior. Um, that could be something as simple as a statement saying, I'm always the one that walks the dog. It's always me. Um, that will automatically cue partner B's inside vulnerable feeling mm -hmm. of no matter what I do, it's not good enough. I, there's nothing I can do to to make my partner happy. That hurts, right? That's a that hits inside. It hurts. It's an inside vulnerable feeling. But the relationship isn't safe. It's not safe for me to turn to my partner and say, you know, when you have a critical and when you when you say a critical statement like that, it it hits here for me. So what happens? We we go we we have to go up into our. Um, secondary mm -hmm. outside protective behavior to protect that feeling mm -hmm. and that outside protective behavior might be completely shutting down not answering walking away um and when partner a sees this outside protective behavior the walking away the shutting down um they get a message that my partner doesn't care They're, they don't hear me they don't care about what i have to say i don't matter mm -hmm. Again, that hits deep inside and a relationship isn't safe. You right. can't, you, you can't express that. So they escalate back up into their outside protective behavior. They might up the ante a little bit. The credit, the criticism might become a little bit more personal. Um, and as you can see, this cycle will go on and on and on and on if we don't find a way to step outside of the cycle. Um, and, and I really like it sounds like what you're saying about the infinity loop that that's yes. exactly what happens, right? One yes. person triggers the other and then the protective behavior amps up the other. Yes. And that's why the visualization that's up right now kind of really tries to show that whether it be an infinity loop or the bow tie, whatever yep, the yep. case may be, the idea is that it gets amped up, amped up, amped up. Exactly, exactly. And I, I one thing that I really just like to make clear for mm -hmm. all couples is that it's really, you're not starting at one point. It, right the 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 cycle is existing because there's a disconnection because there isn't a secure security in the relationship mm -hmm. um so it's not the fact that you didn't take out the dog that is starting this right um it's it's the lack of safety and the the disconnection the distance that you're feeling in the relationship huh and, th and that's really interesting because as as you know a lot of couples come in and they do the blame game Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's him or it's her. And if he or she would have just done something and mm -hmm. everything would have been, uh, you know, would have worked out. But I really like the way this cycle works because you kind of move away from the blame and you exactly. kind of almost try to unify the couple to observe the cycle. So then the yes. couple sees the cycle and some people even say to label the cycle yes. so that they can step outside the cycle and see how they both participate in yes. this uh, you know, oftentimes ineffective dynamic. Exactly. And that's actually part of stage one mm -hmm. um, EFT work, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, the, it Owning your part of the cycle, being able to say, oh, yeah, that is what happens, right? When I feel hurt, this is what I do on the outside. Most couples come in with no idea right. that, that there's more to it than the fact that the dog wasn't locked. Right. Right, right, right. Wow. So then it, so the first kind of part of it is try to track it for the person to own what they're doing 
also to own what some of the hurts are yeah. and obviously the the exact same thing for the other person yes. so once you progress during the therapy and both people are able to do it what happens next we work on creating bonding events through um okay. there's there's a lot of different ways to do that the therapist is working as a tool to model that empathy validation support like we talked about last time mm -hmm. um we also use something called the mac mints mm -hmm. um to when 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 we're able to um to catch a raw vulnerable feeling or even just a just a realization um being able to turn to your partner and say that as silly as it might sound <laughs> some people resist it at first it's it's very powerful because most couples within the first couple sessions can say it to me they can own their their part to me right. turning to your partner i've had so many, the first couple enactments i've had many many people turn and be like <laughs> That's it, right? I, I can't, I can't even get the words out because it's, it feels so unsafe, right? right? And, and that, and, and that's, that's scary because this is your person, right? <laughs> right. And the, the idea of vulnerability, because even kind of uh, <clears throat> alluding back a little bit to our first video, where you even are able to get in touch with that need and yes. own the need, and then you have to turn and look at your partner's eyes and say, I feel unsafe. Yeah. Uh, it's so vulnerable because the other person has so much power in that moment yeah. to say something that's hurtful or obviously, hopefully, to really be able to take it right. in. Right. And when you're still in the cycle, the your partner probably will say something that's hurtful right. because right. They, they're they they're not fully present. They are, haven't slowed down enough right. to recognize what what you're saying to them isn't a direct attack. It's 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 you reaching out and trying to connect. Right. Um, so th that that's that's why it does take take quite right. a bit of time. And, and what happens when the, to you? You know, what, I, th I think what you said really makes a lot of sense because a lot of people potentially watching are saying, "I've tried to tell my husband or yes. wife or partner a thousand times yes. that I want to feel heard. I want to feel that." H how do you get through that block? Because I mean, I definitely hear in session often, it's like, "I don't know why I need to do that." He mm. knows that. Yeah. Or she knows that. Yeah. What? How do you handle that? Um. I usually slow it down. I, I, <laughs> I'll usually just slow it down and, and, and try. The enactments work best when, when there's already an alliance, right? Mm -hmm. um, as a therapist, we're becoming a part of the cycle and we're, um, we're helping handhold them out of it to, to step outside of it. Right. And I think, um, I, I have also heard that quite often right. where I've said this to them a million times, well, do me a favor and try anyway. Right. right. And often when they say, I've said this to a million times and they try, they can't. And and that shows them the power of it. Right. Well, especially because like if they've said it before, it's really during an argument, it's yeah. probably not being in a safe, vulnerable yes. space where they're able to yes. kind of keep eye contact when they're saying it. So the idea of what you said before about slowing it down, yeah. about able to be in this sort of safe space and the therapist is acting to provide that yes. therapist and space and, and, you know, maybe stepping in when needed is really where the power of EFT lies. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think th the other thing with enactments is that, like, you might be able to say it, right. I might be able to say it to you, you know, I, I feel, um, I feel like, like I'm not good enough when you criticize me. The way that the raw emotion that's being shown when they're saying it to the therapist right. is so starkly different. Oh, and see. those things, sometimes we just need to hold a mirror up. To, to to let them see the difference that I'm seeing um, uh -huh. and and let that settle in. Oh, wow. That's uh, I mean, I think that's an excellent point about how much it's so much easier to say and be vulnerable with somebody who you may not have such a good connection with. It's so, so, so much There's harder, low right, to be able to turn to the actual partner and right. in a slow sort of a way to be able to be vulnerable in that space. That's uh, I mean, I think that's pretty powerful because some of the I, I, I would imagine lots of the viewers say that. I've done this before a thousand times. It never works. But I, I do want to kind of highlight this idea that when you're actually doing it with an EFT therapist, that there's an enormous amount of power to have somebody else help the couple to yeah. slow down the interaction, amp up the emotional need, and be able to be vulnerable and enact that need by speaking to your partner in this sort of like almost a... Um, <clears throat> in a vulnerable way. I don't even know a better way to use than just being being scared and yet pushing through it. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, great. So then let's say we've done the tracking, we've gotten in touch with our emotional needs, we're beginning this bonding process mm -hmm. where we're both owning the need, communicating, hopefully, you know, as time goes on, both people are able not only to say it, but the partner is able to take it in. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Bonding events. Okay. That, that, that continuing to facilitate those bonding events. Um, and like, like I said at the beginning of this video, it, EFT is an experiential therapy. Mm -hmm. We'll know in the room when the emotion has de-escalated, when, when there's raw vulnerability happening and when there are bonding events happening. Um, and once those bonding events are happening, um, like I said, st stage three is consolidation of the change, right? Consolidation of the change really just means that, um, that we're, we're, um, retracking this cycle, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of needing to go into your protective um outside behaviors, you're able to, if you if the um if you look at the uh EFT bow tie again, you'll see those blocks that we talked about earlier, the mm -hmm. internal block and the external block. The external mm -hmm. block is the one between the couple, the internal block is your own block to vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And um you'll be able to see if those blocks are still there or not. Um, and once, once the blocks are not, not showing up as much, that's, that, that, that's a sign that it's, you know, that we might be ready for termination. Wow. And what do you make sense? I've noticed sometimes couples when they are in that more vulnerable space are actually physically are able to kind of move closer to each other oh, is yes. to kind of even hold hands to go from moving away to kind yes. of feeling closer. I remember one gentleman even kind of because he was just overcome with emotion, just even leaned in to to his yes. partner to be able to kind of comfort uh, yes. during that vulnerable moment, which was pretty powerful. Yes, absolutely. L leaning in, um, leaning in, even looks Nine. right. Like a lot of like when when uh, couples first start, often it's just straight ahead. I'm, I'm you're looking at me. I'm like, or even not even at me, like right. looking down. Right. That, noticing those things and often even just bringing it live into the room to say it right if you notice somebody looking over at their partner i see you looking at your, over at your partner what's going on right and and they'll be able to to let you know that either they're feeling safe they're feeling curious what's right. going on so that means they're tuned in um all of those little things are just, are, are extremely important in the eft room I, I i really like the way you said that i could you expand on that a little bit because it sounds like it's the idea is to go from being protective mm -hmm. to not only vulnerable, but then I really like what you said about being curious. It almost like taking the spotlight of my own protection and then also being like, what's going on for you? Getting that curiosity out right. from my partner's experience. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think the curiosity is this. I don't want to open a whole other can of worms because mm -hmm. I, I think we can all, EFT is very complicated. Right. There's a lot to it. We're not going to get all of it in, sure. in, in a, you know, a few 15 minute videos, but um, another part that's, just, that's incredibly important is when, when couples come in, often they've made, they've been in the cycle so long, they've made conjectures about who their partner is. He's just an angry person. He's not going to be able to talk to me and understand me. She doesn't really care. She, she, that's why she walks away. She, she, she doesn't care. Right. And these are, they come in with the, the, these, this idea of if this is who my partner is, how can I possibly still be in this relationship? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's all coming from those are the conjectures they made from the outside protective behaviors that right. they have seen over and over and over again right, right. without an understanding of what's going on inside. Gotcha. Right. So what, what you're, what you're asking is it's really the curiosity is take almost stepping outside of that um, assumption that you've made about your partner mm -hmm. and saying, Oh no, maybe that person that I love and care for and I'm longing for is still there mm. and allowing that guard to come down a little bit and, and, and close the gap that's formed. Yeah. Getting curious, getting interested, yeah. Yeah. maybe making space yeah. for the other person's needs sort of in, in, inside yourself. Yeah. So, wow, I could totally see how people come in, start focusing on the laundry or, or socks or who walks the dog 
and then through the process, really getting in touch with their emotional needs, what they're actually asking, being vulnerable, turning to your partner, saying what that's like, the other person's able to hear, also reflect back and also yeah. bring their own emotional needs. You have the sort of bonding closeness effect. And then both people have more internal space to not only be um, more comfortable presenting those needs, but also get curious about what the other person is experiencing, which yes. is extremely bonding because then the other, both people get a sense of caring. Yes. The message is I care. Okay. I, I, it, it matters to me how you're feeling. Right. Right. Wow. So you get from fighting about the socks to hopefully walking away from, from this type of therapy, really feeling not only close, but also having the space to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and also be able to kind of make space for the other person's needs. Yes. Sounds pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Thanks so much, Ami, as always, for joining and everyone who's listening again and, and viewing. Thanks so much for being part of this video. Hope this was helpful and stay tuned. Next month, we are actually going to put a uh, demonstration about how EFT works with a life couple. Thanks so much, guys, and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you like what you just saw, please feel free to check out our videos in our library and also hit the subscribe button so you can check out our future videos.